Let's get it going. From so the worries me is I everything creaks and I everything the more creaks. I'm twisting yeah. around it. Isn't that isn't that um, just our bodies though creaking? It's the furniture yeah, as well. Yeah, yeah, but it, we, we're yeah. saying it's the furniture. <laughs> but it's, it's mostly our aged bodies. So here we are, two grumpy old men who discuss science fiction. Um, the first episode for ages. Because yeah. I've been well, and mm. you've been busy on your projects, your mm. arcane projects, mm. of which we shall say little. Well, I don't know. Um, mm. And we're going to do some reviews. There's mm. going to be a separate video. Um, which um, will be in the um, club room mm. um, for members. Exclusive. Exclusive, because we are nothing... If, what, what was that mm. thing that in... It was in, I think it was in Generation of Swine by um, Hunter S. Thompson, the first um, piece of journalism in that. Mm. He goes into the phenomena of tattooing, mm. and he makes a young lady he knows go and get a tattoo. Mm. She wants it anyway, but he makes her go and get it. And it, it ends with an immortal line, we are, after all, professionals, because mm. she's sort of questions the the ethics of it and stuff but there you go we're not mm. going to question the ethics we're just going to do things so we're going to do some reviews and <clears throat> what we've been uh, have we have we been finding um a certain discontent with some aspects of science fiction i have i think probably for a long time yeah yeah i just don't enjoy it like i used to used to yeah yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. or i don't enjoy it as i thought i should enjoy it. yeah yeah do you think that's partially um, the fact that we are grumpy old men yeah, and that we've yeah. read a lot of essays. Okay, that's it. I think don't we, we, we've just covered, haven't we? Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> or is it? Is it? Is like, it? Ooh. Yeah. Or is it the fact that you know you you, you find there's that thing that Jeff Dyer says about the last word when mm. you find all the good stuff mm. um, by a certain date. I can know this clock because it always ticks, and mm. um, which is what clocks do. Tick, um, tock, it's tick, like the one in nineteen eighty four. Click, 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 yeah. Tick, tock, so. Tick. We found the best things mm. by you get you get to a certain age and you do some mm. exploration, mm. and you don't keep discovering things mm. which are as good. Mm. Mm. You know, do we find do we find all the good stuff early <coughs> on? Mm. Possibly. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. 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 Because yeah. 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 I mean, the bit the big thing about that is that I'm actually a great believer. I think that Jeff is generally right, and one of the interesting things on um, BookTube, as it's laughingly called, is that. People do their, they do their clickbait video, their, mm. you know, mm. 10, 15, 20, 100 best science fiction novels. They update it every year because yeah. they've read stuff since and they suddenly yeah. discovered something which is mm. amazing. Mm. That hasn't happened to me for a long, long time, mm. you know, mm. and I suspect it hasn't happened to mm. you either. Mm. Mm. So maybe it is just yeah. that we're grumpy men. one but, of the problems which maybe comes with age mm. is that you, you know, I reread things that I always remembered as enjoying. Yes. And I'm not... Yeah going to say that i hate them no. or anything like that nothing is as extreme no but i i just don't enjoy them in the way no. i did before yeah i mean i mean one good example is the genocides by thomas ditch thomas or Dish. a book if i'd ever yeah. done my top yeah. 20 as have it would have been in there but yeah. when i reread it recently yeah it was not the book i remembered interesting you yeah. know yeah. because my memory was of the plants you know that yes, yeah. hot host esque yeah. landscape. Well, the aliens have seen but the fact it, it yeah. is more about the people, a is. bunch of nasty yeah. mm. people who, frankly, was more like a a pretty mm. tame episode of EastEnders yeah. than any these people being are, relentlessly horrible. Yeah, they are all pretty <laughs> unpleasant, yeah, aren't they? Yeah. yeah. So I, I, I just, I don't know. I just didn't yeah. enjoy it. As I, I had before. I reread some of it um, a while ago because I like Tom Dish a lot, as you know. Mm -hmm. And he's somebody I've gone back to because I, I've been, when I've gone back to him in recent years, I, his work has really, mm. really done it for me. But the thing with genocides, I think when you, and I know Matt Defoe at mm. Um, mm. Science Fiction Reads, Matt read it recently, yeah. didn't he? And he was mm. blown away by it. Mm. I think the thing that gets you when you mm. first read mm. it when you're young is, um, or when you first read it, is... I mean, the ending for a start yeah, yeah. is the thing. <laughs> you think, wow, you know, mm. he's not hold anything back here. Yeah, yeah. Um, it's the ending, but it, well, when it is it's all interesting. Familiar, this is the thing. Yeah, maybe not, that's what it maybe is. Maybe it's yeah, um, yeah. You know. Maybe it's familiarity breeds contempt, as, yeah, um, as the cliche goes. But you know, before before going into some reviews mm. and talking mm. about that, um, something I just pulled off some of Graham's shelves behind me here, and because the way we have to frame things in here, because this is the study, mm. this is where a lot of the serious work is done. Mm. Um, the, most of the books are elsewhere. Um, I picked these off the shelves, which are just sort of off behind Graham there, simply to show you the covers, because um, these are David. Bryn books 
who I think we've barely mentioned on the channel. And they have wonderful covers by Bruce Pennington. Um, let's just get this because the light is rather strong behind me. Isn't that great? Look at that. Isn't that nice? And you don't see these very much secondhand, do you? You see later editions. And I think these are most the earlier ones of, of Pennington. Um, I particularly like this one of Star Tide Rising, which has got the dolphins on, on the cover and stuff. And, and they're really nice. But yeah, and these are spiffing. Look at that. Isn't that great? So, you know, you don't, um, you don't see these very much at all. And I think looking at the prices, and this was, this was three fifty. So mm. well, they're this all is, bought brand new. Look at that, mm. reprinted nineteen eighty seven. So there mm. you go. So that's mm. second UK printing. Eighty five is the first. So, but <clears throat> again, thinking about things to review, mm. and I say we'll do that different discussion. Um, you're going to talk about some things you've read recently. So mm. shall we start with some singletons, and then we've yeah. got a series to look at. Yeah. So mm. go for it, dear boy. Mm. Reveal, the mm. big reveal. It's Pure Cold Light by Gregory Frost. Gregory Frost. Which is a rock penguin. <laughs> yeah, rock as in the uh, mythical flightless bird in Sinbad. 1896. Right. <laughs> Don't you mean 19 1994. I was going to say, it wouldn't be 1986, yeah. that'd be too soon, because rock yeah. wasn't a thing yeah. then, was it? So, yeah, yeah. yeah. okay. Because yeah. there was a big launch at rock. There was, think, wasn't there? was a, yeah. a signing, wasn't there? Yeah, stuff. yeah, we went yeah. to a um, yeah. an event where they did like a tour, didn't they? Yeah. And yeah. I'm trying to think it was on it. There were lots of... Um, of American R.A. Salvatore, R. A. Salvatore yeah. sticks in it. Yeah. Possibly because of the mullet he had at that yeah. point. Yeah, he be. looked a bit like, yeah. Um, yeah. what was the guy who had the hit single they keep breaking hard? Mm. He looked a bit like that, didn't mm. he? Yeah, mm. yeah. it was a double mm. denim type chap, mm. you know. Mm. I'm sure he's a very nice guy. I'm sure he's mm. he was okay. Mm. But yeah, I can't think who asked us on it. Mm. Um, I always confuse the rock tour, mm. um, the rock tour, mm. with the tour that um, Titan Book set up for Tales from the Forbidden Planet, yeah, yeah. where there was Ross Caveney and yeah, Neil yeah, Gaiman, yeah, and yeah. I always get those two confused. Yeah, well, I've got the they book from that. Yeah, yeah. they so must have been buried. around about the same time. Yeah. So, um, yeah. looking at this, what do we know about Gregory Frost? I think he's written like he wrote like two science fiction novels. Yeah. I ought to have brought the others down. Yeah. I could have showed them. But he wrote um, two fantasy novels as right. well, more, okay. more recently. Yeah. So, which okay. I kind of um, bought completely independently of that. This this sounds sort of almost well, it, a bit cyberpunk. It does, but yeah. it's not really. Right, okay. But it's about um, some very mysterious goings on. Right. And um, I was quite a while ago I read it, and I yeah. obviously um, I can't remember it. But it's, um, I think it's about people taking drugs who, mm. who have a influence on aliens, and the aliens come to Earth. Right to okay. um try and stop what is ah, going on. Okay, so it's it's a lot more going on than you kind of think. Because on says, the surface, it seems quite yeah. cyberpunky. Yeah, because looking at the blurb on the other back, dimensions to cause it. Because it says Scumbercorp. Yeah, Scumbercorp. I love that. Scumbercorp. <laughs> it sounds Scumbercorp. like a comedy, um, but it's yeah. not. Dominated the world via their alien news network, Happy Burgers, and Orbital. A drug that made the poor vanish limb yeah, by limb it, into their hallucinated worlds. Yeah. It was the only way out of Box City. You can imagine what yeah. Box City is yeah. like. Yeah. In the school's desperate twitchers, which is in, you know, that's in italics, twitchers. Um, I thought they were bird watchers. Um, wore electronic masks to hide their identities from the armed children of the dispossessed. Amongst them was the mysterious Angel Rueda, the man Scumbercore had started a riot in order to kill. It's, it really sounds like mm -hmm. something like um, Richard Cadry right. or yeah. K.W. Jeter, yeah. doesn't it? Yeah. So, so what was it like? Was it yeah. any good? I really enjoyed it, actually. It sounds it's, fascinating. It's one of those yeah. books, of, to begin with, I wasn't sure about it at all. Yeah. And then yeah. suddenly it comes alive. It does. It sounds amazing. Yeah. It sounds really yeah. knockabout. It's, yeah. it's, I think... It, there was a point, probably like 30 pages in, when you get a different character coming yeah. to the fore. Yeah. And Sonny is much more Blake. Mu you know, Sonny is, is, you know, mm. going through an appalling experience. I vivid, think it's a much more Blake. Vivid, vivid, yeah. Much, much more, more William Blake. Blake. No, much yeah. more bleak. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right. Yeah. So okay. I know it's a good... I thought it was really Because there is, there is... I mean, reading the blurb of that, mm. which is great, you get the feeling that whoever put the blurb together decided to throw in all the mm. elements and there is a, that was a bit of a thing in mm. sort of like mm. the slightly later cyberpunk when it was still actually cyberpunk yeah people yeah. like jack womack mm. things like ambient mm. where and we're talking sort of like mm. late 80s now 
because after that there isn't any cyberpunk. People say this cyberpunk, there isn't really. It's all in the eighties. Mm. So other after that, there's no point. It's people just copying people. But there is that thing where there was a throw all the elements in thing with cyberpunk, wasn't mm. there? Mm. You know, when you look back at it, people would put all sorts of things in, and I think of narratives by these sort of people we've discussed. They would throw all sorts of stuff in, and you'd have this picture of this very sort of spiky environments mm. with the very chaotic things. And I remember when I read um, What's the Michael Swanick? Vacuum Flowers. Yeah. Yeah. That's like, mm. you know, enormously inventive, mm. the way that the world mm. is, or the orbital colony. I think an, there's a part in that where it's an orbital mm. colony, yeah. the way that's described. And there's immense detail, but it's kind of like scattershot. Mm. It's like the author shooting mm. bullets of ideas at you. And But yeah, that sounds really great. So yeah. Mm. So what was it like tonally in terms of the pro pros and things? Well, I thought it was pretty good, to be quite honest. Yeah, right. it's, I mean, it's not you know the greatest novel ever written, but no, it's um, no. as you know, it's as good as as most. Uh, right. Okay. Nineteen ninety three in Avon. Yeah. So it would have been a paperback original, probably, yeah. wouldn't it? Yeah. And a Penguin Rock in ninety four. Mm -hmm. So that's what to watch out for. I'll watch out for a copy. That looks mm -hmm. interesting. Mm -hmm. Um, and absolutely beautiful, as you can see, the grey and brace standard, mm -hmm. rather like the Outlaw Bookseller yeah. standard. Well, again, it's, it's buying books new. It's buying books new. When um, they're published, yeah, absolutely. Not Thirty years later, yeah. complaining about <laughs> how much they cost. Yeah, yeah, absolutely, you know? yeah, absolutely. Yeah, so yeah. there you go. The time machine. Go back in the time machine and buy yeah. them now. Mm. That's not I wish I could. Though. I wish I could. I so do I. Yeah, I think all those bookshops yeah. are full yeah. of amazing yeah. books, which are not there anymore. Yeah. Tragic. Yeah. Sad, sad, mm. a bit like us, really. Yeah. <laughs> so sad. there we go. Anyway, we've got our coffee, yeah. um, and um, next one, just to um, <clears throat> this is a more recent book. Yeah. I mean, there's, there's nothing remotely cyber about it. No, apart from the title. Yeah, Cyber Circus. By Kim mm. Lakin Smith. Right. Okay. Which is, yeah. I think, it's about 2011. But and that's a new con press. Yeah, 2011. 2011. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And new con, of course, are run by Ian Waits, a mm. British science fiction writer. Great small press, and they do these lovely mm. books. Mm. And this obviously is a trade paperback. Um, there is a hardback. Like, hard I think yeah. I must have bought yeah. that. Was it at that yeah, um, Bristol thing? Uh, yeah, we probably bought this at Bristol Con that year that yeah. we um, we met. Well, there's um, a label on the back, which makes me think it yeah. might be. That looks like a Waterstones label. Yeah. 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 Um, but, yeah, but anyway, we were thinking of the, of the year we uh, met um, mm. Storm Constantine. Mm. Yeah. Mm. So Cyber, Cyber Circus and Black Sunday. So is it two novellas, is it? Well, it's a kind of novel and a oh, short right. story that's oh, okay. related to right. it. Right. Oh, okay. Right. Um, so, and um, and you shall cover that. Yeah. 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 And um, Ian Watson likes it. Mm. Um, Ian likes spiky things. So read the back. I'll read the back. Okay. Well, while I read the back, you, you know, you say something intelligent. So, or, no. <laughs> no, you can read it aloud. That's Great. <laughs> read it aloud. That's what he means. Yeah. Right. Okay. Um, Heliquin, rather than Harlequin, yeah. Heliquin, mm. um, um, last of the Hawkeye military elite, is mm. desperate to escape the legacy of soul food, the miraculous plant food that leached the soil, destroyed his family, and instigated a bloody civil war. God, plants are, I mean, yeah. that's quite something, isn't it, really? Um, mm. For a man awaiting the inevitable madness brought, brought on by his enforced biomorph implant, there's only one choice, run away with the circus. Mm. So shades of Marlon Ellison and yeah. Ray Bradbury there. Yeah. Yeah. Um, drifting above a poisoned landscape, Cyber Circus and her exotic acrobats and bioengineered mm. freaks bring a welcome splash of colour into folk's drab lives. None more so than the escaped courtesan turned dancer, Desirous Nim. When Nim's freedom and her very life are threatened, Heliquin is forced to fight again. See, the thing is... Maybe that's the way to write the science fiction novel. Yeah. You write your blurb first, yeah. Yeah. you fill it with all sorts mm. of stuff, mm. and then you have to construct a narrative yeah. around no. it. Which yeah. is a bit like writing a screen treatment, mm. isn't it? When you're with a film, people write a screen treatment. Mm. So they write the story down, mm. and then the, the script comes from that. Mm. So, well, some people yeah, do that, okay. don't they? They come yeah. up with a synopsis a or whatever. Synopsis. Yeah, yeah. 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 So, yeah, so I know nothing about Kim Lincoln Smith. Mm. Um, so, I mean, the first, as soon as. 
in recent years, as soon as I see anything circus or, mm, mm. you know, show oriented, I think of Tom Remy, mm, um, mm. Blind, blind Voices, isn't yeah. it? which is great. Yeah. 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 He's like sort of like an adult Ray Bradbury. Yeah. And yeah. you can see how Tom Remy fed into people, mm. maybe like mm. Jonathan Carroll mm. and maybe even Gene Wolfe as well. Mm. I mean, Gene Wolfe mm. obviously was going by then. But but yeah, that looks quite interesting. So mm. well, how was it? Mm. I really more. enjoyed it. I yeah. thought it was excellent. Right. It, the, the world in which... It, it is based um because yeah. bear in mind there's a little airship here yeah the and like there's, there's a um, um a sort of digging yeah. leviathan yeah. type machine yeah. coming out of the earth there yeah. as well because he's the a circus mole. is it is in an airship and travels around the world right yeah. yeah and um basically they rescued this um woman who's kind of been treated as a as a slave yeah stroke prostitute yeah and, and the like yeah and they rescue her yeah and then these people who are um I've got this digging Leviathan kind of thing. Come me. after them, and they try and um, mm. you know they go try and go to where the the airships are likely to arrive, and right. then okay. they attack it. But the the world is brilliantly um, evoked. Yeah, and it's kind of um, blasted hell hole like a you know. It's a really interesting. It says yeah. a tale of desperate includes mm. Black Sunday, a sister novelette to Cyber mm. Circus. Mm. A tale of desperation incorporating drought, science, giant burrowing machines, rural magic, mm. racial tension and sensuality in the nineteen mm. thirties Kansas Dust Bowl. Yeah, it isn't in the Again. You know, it is set at some yeah. point in the future when yeah, yeah. when the uh, the world has been destroyed Reduced by, the by this, Dust this Bowl. crop. Yeah, yeah. Which is where the Kansas oh, okay. Dust Bowl was yeah. come in. And again, so, what's what's the tone with this? What's the style? I know? think it's really good. Yeah. yeah, but what's it like? I mean, it's I, I'm not very good at it. I, I, is it is it lyrical and Bradbury esque? Is it hard edged and Gibsonian? Um, you know, is it it's um, more lyrical? I would yeah, say. Yeah, yeah, uh, it has that feel yeah, certainly yeah. from the description. Yeah, I'm not good yeah. at that kind yeah. of thing. I nonsense, of course yeah, you are. I, it's just he is really. Yeah. He's just making it up. But yeah, that looks really interesting. I just so, enjoy something, yeah. and I don't. Yeah, you see, that, you know, compared to Heinlein, yeah, that is kind of full of life, interesting yeah. characters, and yeah. You know, people you kind of relate to a little yeah. bit. I mean, it's, it's a bit of a thing, isn't it? It's a, it's a little bit of a cliche that when you write about um, mm. circuses, freak shows, all those mm. sort of things, mm. that it's that classic thing that you get in, say, like Theodore Sturgeon, mm. you know, the poetry of the outsider, you know, the yeah. people who yeah. who are, mm. are different, you know, mm. and stuff. And, and it sort of bleeds into all sorts mm. of things. Mm. So you, you get those opportunities mm. um, for those sort of characterizations, don't you? And those sort of mm. ways of making mm. points about how mm. people should behave towards each other. But, um, but you know, at, mm. at the same time, I mean, the, the, one of the good things about that is that when writers take that on board, I mean, can you can imagine some of the super woke writers of today mm. doing that yeah. everybody would yeah. be nice to each mm. other there wouldn't be any bad people mm. there'd be no mm. villains there wouldn't be like because mm. they're like in um, blind voices there's mm. the guy who manipulates them all isn't there mm. um you know they wouldn't be the bad guy of something wicked this way comes mm. you know they they would all just be nice to each other and make each other tea and stuff mm. there wouldn't be any drama mm. you know there wouldn't even be melodrama because one, okay. one of the strengths in that novel is the the characters because they are you know the yeah. people who in the circus are very varied yes Did you have this yeah. guy who's um that was mentioned in the blurb who's the like a soldier yeah who's got like an eye and stuff right. fluff like that he's he, got an eye got a, um, yeah is he a cyclops yeah <laughs> no he's a uh, you know he can zoom in really close ah, and stuff right, like okay. that. yeah and yeah. you know you've got him Right, you know, fighting eventually to yeah. try to protect some of the um, oh, okay. the circus. So I guess acts. in a way there are kind of and this, I would I pick this phrase up from. I think it's, I think it's a phrase that um, John Clute uses mm. somewhere in one of either the SF Encyclopedia, Ian Watson likes yeah. it. I should say yeah. Blueberry and Watson, and the Pariah Elite. Yeah, a Pariah mm. Elite, and I guess mm. a good mm. example of that would be. In the midwich, not the midwich cuckoos, um, would be in the chrysalids, wouldn't it? Where yeah. the kids, yeah. who are the telepathic mutants, you know, they are, they grow up of mm. being discovered. Mm. They've been through being discovered and mm. being burnt at the stake mm. or what have you because they're mutants. But in the end, you know, they are sort of destined to mm. to overtake, you know, to become the new you know, sort of Homo superior, as it were. But there are quite so, a lot of yeah. mutated creatures as well, right? Okay. In it, yeah. and um, interesting. I know there's a scene. Towards the end, where they're in like yeah. an underground right. world, where yeah. there's um, 
all manner of strange creatures. Yeah. I mean, that's a it's, classic it's, Jules Verne. Yeah, it's brilliant. It? I yeah. think it's yeah. very well. Yeah, great. Yeah. So there you go. So Kim Lackin Smith, watch out for that. Yeah. I don't know if that's still in print on Newcom. It is. It yeah. Is, yeah. I yeah. mean, the thing, Newcom don't get a lot of attention and they do a lot mm. of um, interesting stuff. So, um, you know, it is it is worth looking at their website and they have good um, sales now and again mm. as well. Mm. So there you go. Newcom Press. Give them a go. Very interesting. So while you have a sip of your coffee, mm. I'm going to look at this because this is very beautiful. Mm. And I'm going to show this to... Um, to the camera, to the to the, the crowds out there, the, mm. the massive fan base that we have, he said laughingly. And this is Queen of Clouds by Neil Williamson. And this is New Con as well. And that's <coughs> absolutely gorgeous. It's a really, really nice book, isn't it? Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, really good. Um, and there's an airship on this as well. There is. There's yeah. obviously a theme running through. Yeah, there is. There's definitely a blimp theme. And um, this is um, limited to 75 numbered copies. And this is signed um, by the author, and it's number forty-five. There you go, nice end papers. And you know you have to you have to snap these up. And mm. I have come across this guy's name. I can't mm. say I've read mm. anything by mm. him. Um, so well, I read this, him in what's a. This, what's the story? I read him in an anthology, as you did, which I could yeah. have um, yeah brought down to show yeah. you. Was it a new con anthology? Yeah, oh, funny enough, yeah. How did enough. Ever did you get that? There you go because they do a lot of anthologies. Yeah, it was edited you know, by so. someone yeah. called Ian White. I don't know if you've ever. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. The thing is, is that but I was right. You know, I actually made a list of people. Yeah. That I yeah. thought I actually quite like that, mm. and he was one of the, the best yeah. short stories in there. Yeah, it was. It was much more my kind of thing. Yes. Yeah. You know? Yeah. The thing is with Newcon is that I mean these days there's a huge, the, the you know the rubbing out the erasing of the line between self publishing and small press is such a big thing and. If you, what's that guy's name? There's that one guy's got a YouTube channel and he mm. self-publishes his stuff in the States and he describes himself as a as a conservative mm. and mm. he does a post almost every day where he talks about the woke nonsense around the science fiction writers mm. of America mm. and what mm. have you um, and how, you know, self-publishing is it's just a really weird thing to me. I'm still very old school. I think if it's good, it'll get published yeah, yeah. by a mainstream publisher. But you have to realise these days, if you look at what's happening, if you go in a bookshop, which I know you really do these yeah, days, yeah. Um, and obviously I do pretty much every day, yeah. um, yeah, surprisingly, yeah. um, <clears throat> that you know the money has all gone over to fantasy. Has nearly mm. all gone off to mm. female writers for predominantly a female market. And you know that's fine, but you do get the feeling that a lot of the sort of more you know, the more challenging material is mm. falling by the wayside. So somebody like Newcon, you know, they they publish all sorts of people, mm. um, always have, that then they can uh, curate and give a legitimate outlet in terms of publishing um, that has some kudos and credibility to it, some professional credibility to it, um, for people who are trying to establish, them, establish themselves as real SF writers. And interesting, I mean, Ian Watson is yeah. mostly published mm -hmm. by Newcon now. Gary Kilworth is, you know, Gary hasn't written science fiction for a long Eric time. Eric Brown was. Eric well, Brown was, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, Keith Brook. Yeah. But the, the real point is this, is that, you know, it is a market thing where, you know, the publishers will go where the money is. But at the same time, publishers have changed. They don't curate and build authors the way they used to. And this just doesn't have an SF. It's happened in all sorts of things. Yeah. And yeah. the thing I like about Newcon is that even though I don't buy anywhere near as many of their books as I'd like to, because um, they do quite a lot as well. They're pretty yeah. dedicated. Um, you know, you know that they are they are sort of going to be looking out for people and looking after people who want to build careers. And if you think, if I think of the SF writers that I really like um, the current, they're not even a current generation because they're mostly the same age as mm. you and me or even a bit older, mm. a bit younger. Mm. People like Adam Roberts, Chris Beckett, um, Nina Allen, Emma Newman, um, those sort of people. I mean, a lot of them, you know, they were well into their 40s mm. before mm. they had a literary career mm. because they've just been swamped by space opera and fantasy. Mm. And, you know, people who they're people who would have who should have been in the depths of their careers in their 30s mm. but they've had to wait much longer to become established you know and it's, it's baffling really but anyway queen of clouds which looks beautiful what's it all about <clears throat> well he is a um what do i say Give, let's have, a have look. a look at the blurb yeah i can drink more of my coffee then well, I love it, it, it was published this is 
almost brand new. 2022. Yeah, I don't recognise that one. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> he, um, I'm so, so I read a short story of his. As you said, yeah. yeah. And I, and I bought you, that yeah. one. Yeah. yeah. On the basis yeah. of it. Now, I've read reviews of him and mm. he is often um, compared to um, it's kind of the love child of Gene Wolfe and Jack Vance. Mm. Now, despite that, yeah. Um, also, I've seen reviews by Nina Allen yeah. and Chris Beckett. There's one by Chris Beckett. Yeah, yeah. 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 I mean, if you go on his website, there's loads yeah. of reviews oh, like right. that. Okay. So, uh, but he kind of, um, how do I describe it? He is very, he was very much a literary writer. Mm. But it, it, that book appears to be a fantasy book. Yes. But underneath yeah. is kind of science fiction. Yeah. It, and Queen, Queen of Clouds. Mm. Yes, see, that may sound like an airy fairy kind of you know, a queen in a castle or something. Yeah. It's actually a woman, a massively wealthy woman, mm. who um, runs a company that controls the weather. Right. You okay. see, so it's a completely different yeah. from your... Because the initial description on the back yeah, sounds very pastoral. Like yeah. And very yeah. lyrical, as you said. Yeah. Because yeah. <clears throat> the character mm. is raised in an idyllic mountain backwater. Yeah. And yeah. he's aiding mm. Master Kim to craft strangely sentient sylvans. Yeah. Um, mm. And mm. then, yeah, um, and there's a character called Paraphernalia. Yeah, which is great. Which is brilliant, <laughs> yeah, great. isn't it? Yeah, Paraphernalia. Yeah. Yeah. But so, and, it, yeah. and Chris Beckett says, um, it feels, it feels, and that's the important thing. Yeah. Yeah. And it, this is the thing with SF and fantasy. How it mm. feels is mm. no indicator mm. of what it actually is. Mm. It's, it's the, it's the nuts and bolts of what it's about. Mm. It feels part adult fairy tale, part steampunk, with a dash of satire thrown yeah. in. Yeah. So, would you? What is it satirizing? Mm. Would you say? Did you spot that bit? <coughs> or, or is well, it? I'm not sure if I really get <coughs> satire very, very much, <coughs> but it's. Um, the, the basic core idea is it's set in the future, yeah, future world where there's been war between mankind mm. and what they call uh, machine intelligence, right? All right, so you could say artificial intelligence, yeah. if you like, where people won, yes, but the yeah. machine intelligence is still there, yes, except yeah. it has become kind of part of nature, right. Okay. Right. Oh, okay, so um, so if you imagine nanotech and yes, machine yeah. and yeah. You know, AI, yeah. yeah, that is becoming part of nature, which is right. where the sylvans come in. Oh, ah, okay. As you yeah. see, yeah. they craft them out of wood, but the yes. wood contains yeah these so it's machine intelligences, right. which are kind of um, diffuse, <clears throat> dispersed. Yeah, yeah, know, yeah. yeah. Oh, okay. And they, you know, they don't initially. You don't really mm. know. They just so, you you think it's maybe some kind of airy fairy wood sprites or something. Yeah. But in reality, it is you know they're crafting these things and they're coming to life. They're not creating the life that like <laughs> naturally yeah, occurs. Yeah. Okay. But it's the same with the a whole thing about the weather. Right. You know because they've learned how to control weather, mm. but the basically there are nanos, na nanites, what you want to call them, in yeah. the clouds. Yes. And they've learned yeah. how to control that, but they kind of fight back. Because <clears throat> I felt like we were being controlled, but right. the um, I'm not even making it sound crap now the way I'm describing it. But the uh, you know, the, this kind of idea that you know, you've got this society which is kind of vaguely steampunky Victorian, yes, sort yeah, of thing, yeah. where technology is frowned on, yes, for the because obvious of reasons. the war yeah, with yeah, the yeah. machine. Well, that's the whole thing with Dune, isn't it? It's like, yeah. but when, when people read Dune, mm. I mean, when I first read it, I, I I didn't put it in these terms. I put it in these terms now, so I hadn't read enough to say. But when you read Dune, you think, why is it like a dynastic fantasy? Mm -hmm. And of course, if you look in the appendix, yeah, it's because of the uh, Butlerian Jihad, Butlerian which Jihad, Jihad, is hardly yeah. mentioned, yeah. which is the war against machines, yeah. Yeah. which man only just managed mm -hmm. to win, which mm -hmm. is why there's no computers and why they have the mentats. Mm -hmm. But I mean, you look at a book like that, which sounds very interesting, it's very mm -hmm. beautiful, and you think. Okay, obviously they've done a great job, and you think, well, how, well, how the devil is this not a Golang spur? Yeah, well, probably because, because they're it's, spending their yeah, money on yeah, crap. On crap is yeah. what it comes down yeah. to. Yeah. <clears throat> you know, this is the thing, and ironically, obviously there's an environmental thing yeah. to this, yeah. and we're seeing all these mm. mainstream writers suddenly writing, mm. and you know, I'm going to use the terrible term now, clarify. Mm. Mm. As if, you know, George R. Stewart never existed yeah. in the 1950s, yeah. Yeah. you know. Yeah. And it's it's just a shame, isn't it? Yeah. I mean, it's well, a beautiful book, yeah. isn't it? Well, I was reminded of the author Stephen Palmer. Yeah, who wrote Emergence. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Who wrote... Yeah. Uh, yeah. 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 Is, it, is that the right... Emergence is the one that no, everyone remembers. No, it's not. It's, um, it's Stephen Palmer. <clears throat> Shit. 
It was on the cover of Interzone. Yeah, it's not that one. Not that one. It's, but it's um, one of his. No. No, it's not one of his. But Emergence is worth tracking down anyway. Yeah. So. But anyway, this this one that I've completely forgotten about. Yeah. This guy, he um he wrote two books. Yeah. Published by like Orbit or something like that. Right. In the kind of mid nineties, and they're both set in a future world mm. where um nature has rebelled against the uh, yeah humanity and humanity has been kind well, we of remember, slowly wiped out below. yeah yeah right so the the idea of nature rebelling against yes, has yeah. been around for years funnily enough that's something that tim we mentioned tim <coughs> we were talking earlier about mm. tim levin um mm. and of course he did that in the nature of balance didn't he which is yeah. brilliant yeah it's a really good book yeah. um but mm. yeah so have a look on the website i mean i, I might get one of these because it's mm. really beautiful as well mm. isn't it mm. and um so it's very well written yeah to me it is 25.99 it's a limited edition this signed. yeah there is a, um there's probably a, tr a standard isn't paperback, there let's have a look there yeah. will be a, a trade paperback as well yeah. um there's a trade paper so it's probably about 12 quid mm. so there you go well, the book so he, before that mm. was a um it says it was says, shortlisted for yeah, various yeah. awards. So. It says that he sees this as a thematic prequel mm. to the Moon King, which was shortlisted for the BSFA award and the British Fancy Awards. I have heard of the Moon King actually. Mm. Um, mm. So there you go. There we are, mm. and Scottish SF as well. So yeah. interesting. Yeah. Right. Well, one to track down definitely. Yeah. Mm. And I think your next is an old favourite, isn't it? An it old favourite of yours. Yeah. 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 It's Storm Constantine. Yeah. And Callum Shaw. Over this way, a bit to your bike. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So that's one you hadn't read before. I reread so it. You reread yes. it. Yes. 1994. 1994. Yeah. And, um, and um, I think Michael Moorcock mentioned Storm Constantine. Squiggle on by Storm Constantine. Yeah. That was yeah. from the Bristol Con, which would have been about 2017, yeah. wasn't yeah. it? So, yeah. yeah. Can I have a look at that? I remember this one. Yeah. It's a nice mm. cover, isn't it? Look at that. Very good. Published by Headline, mm, mm. Um, and um, you've always been a big apologist mm, for Storm, mm, haven't you? You mm. always like to have stuff. So, um, I mean, looking at this again, this looks instantly like a fantasy novel. Yeah, but is it? Well, this is a question. Yeah, this, is the question. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. this is the question. This is the question. So, with that book, you, it begins with this guy who's in this strange city where he seems to be alone. Yeah. Apart from a few old, old creatures wandering around kind mm. of thing. And he starts sort of writing. Mm. And probably the story is what he creates. But right. well, I'm, I'm giving it away. But, yeah. but when you get to the end, there's kind of a twist. And you think, well, maybe it is all real. Yes. <laughs> so, so, in other words, yeah. it's, it's, so it's a metaphor. Yeah. 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 So, yeah. so you're questioning yeah. reality. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. you're not sure whether yeah. the writing yeah. is what he's coming up with. Yeah. Um, and well, as uh, with a lot of these stories, it is about um, two individuals traveling. Yes. And, um, God, I'm, I'm so terrible at remembering. On a things. quest. Yeah. Yeah. So, kind of on a quest, but they're um, from very different circumstances. Yeah. But they're from the, um, the people who live in cities, which um, do they move or am I confused? It, say, it says here that um, Terranauts collect the scattered crystals and use them as pilot stones to guide other cities yeah, across the, the plains. The, the cities yeah. travel, yeah. 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 Okay. Sometimes, uh, well, yeah. they have completely um, unique um, mm. cultures. Some are um, welcoming, some yeah. are, um, you know, brutal. Because <laughs> the, the suggestion <laughs> yeah. of crystals there is, is a bit new new age. Yeah. Um, but of well, course, I think she was of that Yeah, because right? she was, yeah. that, you know, she was a goth, wasn't yeah, she? Oh, yeah. You know, and yeah. as, as I just said, when, mm. when Mike, Michael Moorcock said in the interview, um, I think this is in the interview mm. we did in Paris, where he said mm. um, about the work on 87, he said, well, um, where the storm came along with a load of other goths, and he said they were the most beautiful people yeah. there. Yeah. You know, <laughs> and um, because I was there, and I was beautiful, and he said laughingly, "Well, I was, I was slim. I'll say that." Um, but, um, but yeah, it's you know, you look at this, but you can see that it is again that thing. It's the appearance of fantasy. Mm. But there's nothing in the blurb which actually says magic. And, no, you know, no. and there's no supernatural entities yeah, in this. Yeah, yeah. So it's not magic. So it's not fantasy. Mm -hmm. So it just goes to show, you know, that the tonal thing, and we're going to discuss mm -hmm. that in a different video, as I say, is important. But, yeah. I mean, you've always been a massive fan of her, mm -hmm. haven't you? Mm -hmm. yeah, well, it is yeah. world creation. It's interesting yeah. that in, is it in this one? 
you know, Shadows on the Hillside, yeah. edited yeah. by Storm Constantine, yeah. which is a, uh, a new con, yeah, which sure. is a yeah. anthology of um, world building stories. Of, yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. So You're I mean, quite keen on world building. Yeah, I love you? it. It's, yeah. it's my, yeah. my, my reason to etra when yeah. it comes to... Uh, it's a weird thing because, I mean, there was that famous mm. moment, it must be about 15, 20 years ago, mm. when M. John said in something online, he said, being M. John, he said, world building is shit. Mm. But of course, mm. the funny thing is, mm. is that... You know, M. John does a kind of world building, mm. but his world building is all about things falling apart. Yeah. And it's also about things not being explained. Mm. So mm. when he builds a world, what he does, mm. instead of stitching it together, mm. so you gradually so you get this gradually unfolding mm. tapestry, mm. Um, like you do in, say, I mean, mm. one of his primary influences has got to be Gormagast, yeah. with the, the yeah. big castle mm. and everything. Mm. You know, it's not, it is that thing where well, he leaves it mysterious. He's influenced by things. Yeah. Like that. And I mean, if you think yeah. about it, I mean, there's mm. a lot of mysteriousness if you think a classic world building text like say hot house by mm. brian ornes mm. you know there's always revelations and things mm. popping out mm. isn't there mm. you know um because you know that's the nature of the beast so so you um if if somebody had never read because this is a single turn yeah because there obviously is a series isn't yeah. it the ray through series yeah. um mm. which was her big thing mm. um mm. where would you place this would this be a good place to start would you say well I she wrote three or four novels uh, yes. well, by headline, which I think are probably her best books, yeah, ultimately. Yeah, yeah. But I don't get the impression they ever sold very well. No. Well, headline... The problem is they don't appeal... <clears throat> the pe people who should be reading yeah. them are not, basically. Yes. This is the problem yeah. with all these authors. Yeah. They should be being not being read by people who, um, who like... Um, um, Arthur C. Clarke and people yeah. like because the writing is about the writing. The thing, you know, I've been thinking right. recently, and it, it doesn't I, matter if it's a <clears throat> fantasy or an alien planet. Yeah, it's the ability to to convey. Yeah, yeah, yeah and yeah, to create, to transport. Yeah, you Ab to, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's yeah. rather like the thing about in the in the first in the um, Gregory Frost book, the drug. Mm. It's the thing mm. about taking you on a trip, on a journey, yeah. and yeah. pulling you out of reality mm. into mm. a different reality through which you can see your own reality yeah. reflected yeah. in a different way. And that, to me, mm. has always been a big thing mm. for, for SF. It reveals by concealing, mm. and it conceals mm. by revealing. Mm. And I've been thinking about this whole list of shame thing, um, and both of us uh, have been frustrated recently, as we mm. said, um, reading people we haven't read before and finding mm. we hated them. Mm. But, mm. you know, people do their list of shame, and I'm, I'm thinking in a list of shame video with a difference, mm. so watch mm. out for that. Mm. Because I think in that, what I'm going to do is tell people what they should be reading, and it's, it'll be a different list of shame. It's, 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 it's the shame that maybe you, mm. the, your viewers, should feel for stuff you haven't read rather mm. than what I should feel, because, you know, I don't care, you know me. Mm. Um, mm. But, yeah, interestingly, speaking about headline, at that period in the 90s, they did about half a dozen books by Tanith Lee. Yeah, they did, they? yeah, with amazing and covers. Yeah. yeah, they got brilliant yeah, covers, yeah. yeah. And they're relatively yeah. easy to pick up. I mean, mm. Tanith's mm. stuff is generally massively collectible now. Mm. Um, and people who like Tanith mm. Lee would like yeah, Storm Yeah, 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 it's, it's there. Yeah. And it? I mean, yeah. Storm yeah. published yes. a load of, you know, yeah. her Emmanuel, Emmanuel Press published yes. quite a lot of Tanith Lee. Yeah. Because Tanith Lee, so, she must have, because she was so prolific, she did yeah. at least six for Headline, didn't yeah. she? It must be about six. And they're all beautiful mm. books as well. Yeah. So, yeah. And they are getting harder to find. So if you see them, pick them up. Because mm. Tanith mm. is becoming more and more collectible. Mm. And you, you get the feeling maybe this will be the point on BookTube where people discover Storm Constantine. Yeah. Mm. And if you want to talk about um, gender bending, all mm. that stuff, mm. you know, she was doing this, you know, from, yeah. I mean, when did her first books come out? Late 80s, wasn't it? Yeah. They were yeah. Orbit as well, yeah. weren't they? I yeah. seem to remember. Yeah, yeah. Well, they were McDonald is hard. McDonald's hardcovers and yeah. orbit paperbacks. And orbit yeah. paperbacks. Yes, yeah. and you know, but so they were about a world where basically, yeah. um, I don't think it was ever explained what no. had happened. Yeah, but you had this new race of yeah. of humans who yeah. were hermaphrodites. Yes, who yeah. were um, yeah. emerging. And yes. ultimately yeah. they fought in a yeah. very bloody war. Yeah, and um, have taken over. This is the thing. You know. None of this stuff is new. I mean, I mean, in a way. You know, if you if you look back to the first Jerry Cornelius novel, um, the final program. Part of the point, of the final program, is that Miss Brenner has this idea that the apocalypse is looming, and that she wants to create this hermaphroditic being mm. who is self-duplicating, and she wants Jerry to be part of that. Mm. Um, and she's stolen the idea, of course, from um, from Jerry's father, Alexander, who's off screen at that point because he's dead. But um, but yeah, so there you go. Um, so SF. 
with a distinctly sort of dreamy feel there. It's a great cover, yeah. that, actually, yeah. isn't it? Isn't that yeah. good? So, again, and again, I think most of Storm's books you can pick up fairly mm. cheaply, I think, from mm. what I've seen. A lot of them you can buy new. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. yeah. this is the yeah. thing, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. So, there we go. Yeah. So, there's some, some sort of singletons. But a while ago, you will have remember I did a career overview of Michael Greatrex Coney. Um, and um, I mentioned in that that some of his later books in the Song of the Earth sequence, and this is the Celestial Steam Locomotive, and you've seen my copy of this on that overview, that I hadn't read these, um, and I never fancied them because they look like fantasy novels. Mm -hmm. And you, of course, have read them. I have. Uh, being a mm. solid man. And have you mm. read them recently? Um, a few months ago. There you go, so, yeah. You see, so, because um, yeah. we um, we were big Coney fans going way back. Mm. You see, back in the 80s... It's um, the only ones I haven't read are, are these. Yeah, yeah. And I so, feel really yeah. guilty about it. Yeah, I know. I feel the yeah. same. So now well, you've read reading, them, I feel even more see, pressure. If you, if you read in comments on in reference books, yes, they yeah. tend to get higher scores. They Instead can, of being yeah. two, out of, two yeah. out of five, they're yeah. three out of five. Yeah. And they're actually, they're, um, they're set in a, a distant, very distant the future. future. Yeah, they get future compared world. to Cordway and Smith yeah. a lot. And I mean, people yeah. think that's fantasy, but it's yeah. not. It's, it's just the way they've a package. It's science fantasy. Yeah. You know. So this is three of them in um, the Orbit editions. And I used to stock these um, when we first met. These were, I think these were all out or coming up for that point. Because mm -hmm. these are all bit. That's... 86 which was it was it when did we meet 87 88 wasn't it I yeah, think. yeah so these were coming out mm. um this is the second one um 86 so these took two years to come out mm. in um mm. in paperback and cat carina which was a gold yellow jacket mm. so these i'll just show you the covers properly mm. um i used to stock these and i think oh they look too fantasy for me mm. what have you um and they're a series mm. and there's gods of the great way so that's the U.S. Houghton Mifflin hardcover, and you'd have seen that on my channel as well. And that's the U.K. paperback. We get a lot of glare in here today, dear boy. Um, mm. So there we go. I'll just obscure you briefly. Um, and there's Cat Carina, which mm. is the one which gets compared a lot to Cold Rain and Smith, yeah. isn't it? Because yeah. of the cat thing, yeah. the cat yeah. person thing, the cat yeah. people thing. Mm. gets compared a lot. But mm. Um, mm. hold forth on mm. these volumes. Mm. What, um, what 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 they like in the end? They were distant future SF. Mm. Well, the very distant future where um, mm. humanity is kind of sp um, split off into a whole series of genetically engineered mm. kind of subspecies, which is yeah. obviously the cat yeah. thing. So they are basic people, but they have mm. animal genes. Yes. So, you know, yeah. you can have all manner of different creatures. Yeah, yeah. But um, I guess quite a few, you know, that has happened and then mm. thousands of years later. Yes, yeah. You've got a, a situation where people are generally living in domes, right? Okay, where they've um, kind of um, regressed physically, right? Become like well, they're all like babies, basically yeah. big adult-sized babies, right? And they they're in these domes. It's kind of a reflection they're, of contemporary they're all society. Dreaming, <laughs> they're right. all oh, okay. um, jacked into a computer, ah, okay. massive computer that yeah. is um, over the whole whole planet yeah and they're jacked into this computer and mm. i can't remember what it's called but then there's kind of like mm. like virtual reality if you like yeah. but there's this is where the kind of fantasy side comes in is the um the fact they can do things in this fantasy world right like they can um i think it's called small wishes they can make mm. wishes like you could wish that i look like marilyn monroe or right. something like that right. you can you can create your own little world in there. that would be quite something yeah. but but they they people get together and they make wishes to create certain things right. like celestial steam locomotive ah. yeah is, is created in this kind of virtual yeah. reality yeah but this is where it gets confusing for me mm. is for somebody my limited intelligence but but you can travel between planets on yes. that celestial steam like oh planet. right okay so it kind <clears> of <throat> is it's like a virtual reality but <clears throat> yeah if you I'm, you know I mean, so there is a kind of it badly rapture right. of the nerd cyberpunk thing about this right? yeah. yeah yeah so yeah. It, the, the 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 idea mm. about them being sort of giant babies is interesting isn't it because mm. you know these these themes have come up in sf for mm. a long time mm. they go back mm. to things like the machine stops and mm and you know that whole thing and th this seems mm. i mean thinking of the co the earlier coney which mm. we've read and loved yeah um you know the pastoral settings the seaside mm. settings even yeah. on other planets mm. Mm. um and i really really enjoyed rereading um 
the jaws that bite, the claws that catch, mm. aka mm. the girl with the yeah. symphony of fingers, a yeah. while ago. Um, mm. And I'd forgotten how gritty he was. Yeah. Yeah. You know, he's quite mm. sort of gritty. He's like a man's man in lots of ways, mm. despite mm. the mm. tinges of adolescent romanticism, which mm. I love in his mm. work, which I, I think gives it real character, mm. the mm. super he did thing that I was talking about when I was talking about him. Mm. Was there any of that in there? There is grittiness. Yeah. 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 I mean, they meet um, monsters yeah. along the way, which are pretty uh, brutal. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Know. But the, the, one of the um, main themes of the book, though, is these people, mm. these babies, yeah. are all, uh, not all dying, but they've started dying. So the ah. people who kind of oversee them are trying to um, work out a way of saving them. And one of the ideas, I guess, because there are wild humans yeah. who are still living on the face of the earth, right. they think yeah. that they obviously can bring in some more genetic material. material. Yeah, yeah. And they travel because they get this, this ah. belief that, that on an island somewhere, Right. There's some, you know, pure humans pure, or yeah, something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, um, well, that's part of the story. You see, again, that, I mean, there's there's some old things there, isn't there? You think of Brave New World, where yeah. there's the, yeah. Where, yeah. where the characters visit mm. the um, the savages, as it were. Mm. You know, you get that in, in Harlan Ellison's A Boy and His Dog, where mm. blood is taken into the down under yeah. because they've all gone sterile, yeah. even though he's living on the surface, mm. which should be irradiated. Mm. Um, all the people in the down under, the ones who are sterile. Yeah. And of course, yeah. obviously, that's a metaphoric mm -hmm. thing mm -hmm. because he says, you know, who would want to live down there, you know, in white picket fence land, you know, and mm -hmm. stuff when you could have a telepathic dog and mm -hmm. have a generally terrible mm -hmm. life. So it says something about, mm -hmm. um, you know, sort of perfect 50s America, obviously, even though, you know, that was written in the 60s. It says things about the sterility mm. of, of consumer yeah. capitalism yeah. and conformity mm. and things. Mm. So you get that. Mm. And you also in Angela Carter's um, Heroes and Villains. Mm. Again, mm. there's the scientist living in like the castle, isn't there? Yeah. The, the yeah. citadel. Mm. And Marianne wants to, and she goes mm. out and she teams up with one of the savages, mm. doesn't she? You know, mm. so oh, this sounds really interesting. Mm. So, so do you think, would you say that this was, was it a tight trilogy? Mm. Did it, did, did it feel that you, <clears throat> you had to read them in sequence because obviously well, I, yeah that's yeah, how I read yeah, them but yeah, I think it's like yeah. a lot of these things yeah. you you know because when they're not massively long yes no which helps no. yeah but I think I enjoyed the Cat Katrina Cat Car Karina yeah um, they're all about 250 pages yeah. long I think long. I enjoyed that the most yeah and the others <laughs> the others were very good but I was yeah. beginning to because this know, is this a prequel yeah, 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 it is. yeah I read it first though. yeah but I think that is I think it's well, I must read mine. My, my impression was that they were probably better written yes. than his science fiction. Yeah. They were warmer. There was more kind of... Yeah. The language was probably... Because one of the things that struck me about Coney is his books are quite dry. And I don't think I'd really realised that before. Mm. But there is a dryness to them. Yeah, and in I a think funny way that it is. quite yeah. different. There's a bit, it's hard yeah. to describe, isn't mm. it? Because I found going back to um, the one I mentioned was that... Mm. They, they are lyrical and they are mm. pastoral, mm. but there is a sort of arid. Mm. There's a lot of flavour, but it is yeah. quite arid. Yeah, but I think a lot. There's a lot yeah. of a lot of British SF from yeah, well, those I, days. Is does that does to, that the, make to you a think, modern reader is like that? Yeah, but I, I think with with mm. um, that one I referred to. Um, mm. Do you think that he was sort of referring to the Familiar Sands by J. G. Ballard? I mean, mm. some people mm. say he was, mm. and there's an other truth in that. So. Mm. But yeah, that's great. So yeah, I must read them because yeah. um, you know his yeah. work was good, wasn't it? And this was, yeah. Yeah. you know, deep, having read these, I mean, obviously publishers always have the same thing where they they will have said to him, "Oh, here's your, you write the trilogy, you know, here's your big chance." And um, before that, mm. um, I mean, there are series, but they're not mm. tight series in his work. You mm. know, you could read mm. them as single turns. So like I would the say they're ones. more like just yeah. one long novel, really. Yes. In two yeah. Yes. Yeah. 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 So so you know you can imagine. Mm you know, MacDonald or whoever saying to him, you know, you know write, write a big series, mm. you know. Mm. And funny enough, he's Michael Coney on these. Mm. The G, the, the, the Michael Great Tracks, mm. that tended to come up on well, American later editions, books, the later right? ones, yeah. Yeah, those of yeah. Fang the Gnome. Fang the Gnome, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so um, I haven't read those. Yeah, because the G was a yeah, strange I think they're the same, Noah, same world as this. Yeah, they're I certainly think. related. Yeah. yeah, so we'll have to read those yeah. and review yeah. those at some point. Yeah. So there's a few reviews for you. Mm. Um, as I say, there's going to be another video with us in the mm. club, which will appear not mm. exactly the same time, but very soon afterwards. Depends mm. how quickly I can upload things and that. And uh, thanks, Graham, for mm. um, for revealing again and some mm. you know fascinating range of mm. interesting stuff. And um, mm. 
which has awakened my consciousness mm. to Gregory Frost and Neil Williamson. This looks really nice. I might get one of those. Oh, it's, it's and um, yeah, Storm Constantine yeah. again. Somebody who. If you were to read it, I'd recommend it. Yeah, that. yeah, yeah. Because I've only read short stories, I think. Yeah, yeah. Um, and um, Kim Lake and Smith. So there we are. Right. So we're going to sign up for now. We've had our coffee. Um, and then we'll see you in the club room. Bye for now. Good stuff. Oh, I hate it.